Oh, my God. As we've been doing those lookbacks at the previous year and decades, I suddenly had this brilliant idea. Why not go a bit back and feature fights from the 2000s? When you think about it, the 2000s is probably the era when a lot of us grew up on anime. Behold the era of the big three, but trust me, those popular shows that set the landscape of this decade wouldn't be all that you'll see. In fact, I had some surprises in store for you, and while I doubt it, knowing you guys, you might even be able to find a show here with a fight that you overlooked by accident. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get the ball rolling and start taking our furthest trip down memory lane to date. True to its artsy and unique form, Samurai Champloo brings us the first among the top fights of the 2000s. Here, Mugen and Jin battle Karia, the so-called Hand of God. This fight shows much of Samurai Champloo's appeal. The artistic shots are there and the simple fluid sequencing of attacks is there too. I really like how non-Mugen sword fights in Samurai Champloo pretty much go against the typical shonen style of deadlocks and clashes of power. Instead, the fights are fast, fluid and place emphasis on dodging and moving according to pre-planned moves. Karia is just the perfect type of opponent to set the two main characters on and to establish the overall power level in the series. The two of them got their asses handed to them by the sheer genius and style of their opponent. The 2000s is the era of the Shonen Jump Big 3, and the first one to enter the list is Bleach with its Ichigo vs Grimjow fight. Grimjow's one of Ichigo's most memorable rivals, and it's not a surprise that their final fight delivered in all regards. Personally, I don't consider this the best fight in terms of character building or clash of ideals. This fight, however, is king when it comes to good old slugfests, as Ichigo and Grimjow went at it raw with unrestrained power, just as the sixth Espada wanted. Grimjow may not be Ichigo's perfect foil, but he sure knows how to make an impact, and despite not having as much internal stakes as some of the previous Ichigo fights, Grimjow versus Ichigo's final fight remains one of the most memorable and visually imprinting clashes in Bleach. Feeling massively overwhelmed, Ichigo bet on all he had up to this point, his raw will and resolve. With Orihime's fate at stake, Ichigo got that last push he needed and ended up finishing Grimjow with a slash that also doubled as one of the best fight screenshots in the arc. Now here's a show that's rather niche compared to what we've taken a look at so far. 2007's Moribito does start off with a bang, with a great fight coming in as early as the third episode. Balsar shows off how much of a badass female lead she is by taking on several hunters at once. The numbers disadvantage doesn't seem to phase the seasoned warrior one bit as she comes out right on top. Although, I've got to say, is that even really that surprising? Looking at the clip, you wouldn't expect Moribito to be a 2007 show given how great the fighting looked. Fight choreography and the animation are all ahead of their time in this series. If you think that the fight looks great, then you might want to watch the rest of the series. With its themes and intriguing story, Moribito is a gem that deserves more appreciation. Team Daiguren and their battle against the Anti-Spirals is by far the show's pinnacle as far as big fights go. It has all the trigger signatures, over-the-top action, crazy twists and sacrifices, and the spine-tingling finish sequence fueled by fiery voice acting and Sorairo Days blasting in the background. Thinking about it now just gives me goosebumps, and I'm sure the same goes for some of you as well. It's hard not to like this fight because it's probably peak TTGL, and everything you'd love about the show is condensed in this one decisive fight with Team Dai Gurun carrying the hope of humanity on their back. The final battle of TTGL truly is a landmark moment in the late 2000s. It capped off the show that put Trigger on the map and the studio hasn't looked back ever since. For the very few of you who didn't know, Hunter x Hunter had an anime way back and it's from there where we will be taking a look at the next fight on the list, Kurapika vs Uvogin. 
The brute of the Phantom Troop, the unstoppable Uvogin takes on Kurapika in this fight that showcases why fights in Hunter x Hunter are so fun and unpredictable. I don't blame fans for taking him for granted because he was defeated so early, but when you look at the guy in a vacuum, he's just overwhelming. That in turn makes him the perfect opponent to put over and build hype for Kurapika's abilities as the giant brute of a man gets absolutely destroyed by Kurapika. Through clever manipulations and unpredictability, Kurapika was able to snow Snowball his advantage in the fight and easily win, even healing through Uvogin's attack. To his credit, Uvogin was never the dumb muscle that his boisterous behavior and loud mouth make him seem to be, but he does find himself outmatched here. The icing on the cake is the reveal of how Kurapika's abilities counter his enhancer ability. The battle's been decided, and even Uvogin himself knows it. Fifth place fight is a real slobber knocker featuring Takamura taking on Hawk. Brian Hawk and Takamura are basically foils for each other. Loud, boisterous, and perverted, the two are cut from the same cloth. Riding on a winning streak and being carried by an all time high, Hawk confidently begins combat against the Japanese opponent. Trading impactful punches and swinging the momentum back and forth, it was really a war inside the squared circle. At the fight's darkest moment, it's Takamura's unstoppable rage that allows him to finally turn the tides. The intensity has been turned up to such an extent that it allows him to finally settle the score and put an end to the undefeated streak of Brian Hawk. The over-the-top fight is part of what makes Ippo such a classic. Where else do you see non-main characters being featured in such epic showdowns? The fight makes Takamura look so badass and needless to say, he beat Hawk into retirement. Literally. Takamura won't be in another fight as awesome as this one. I'd be hard pressed to write something about the 2000s without at least mentioning Cowboy Bebop, one of the landmark shows of that decade. Now for this entry, however, we go past beyond the much loved series and take a look at a fight from the movie, the battle between Spike and Vincent. Really, who doesn't love a good old fist fight to end an amazing anime movie? The two fighters, after numerous confrontations, find themselves in for one decisive face off and they simply put out one of the best unarmed combat sequences in anime. The action's fast and furious and their fight spills all over the place. After numerous setbacks, Spike finally gets the upper hand in what's been a touch and go battle. As an aside, I also like how the whole fight simply demonstrates Spike's endurance concurrently with his vulnerabilities. Despite being the ace bounty hunter, Spike seems to be fighting an uphill underdog battle here, but you just don't notice that at first because of the cool sequences. Hand to hand combat at its finest. <laughs> In contrast to the Clash of the Titans, we have an underdog fight for our third place entry. All you need to take a look at is the build up and the roles of the two characters, and it's not hard to predict the winner of Gara versus Rock Lee. On one hand, you've got the arc villain who's heavily featured everywhere. Facing him is the resident comedic side character who, despite kicking Sasuke's ass, certainly stands no chance. I mean, let's be realistic about it. However, if you look at the fight alone, you don't get that impression. From the beginning of the fight, Rock Lee took on Gara with all he had and was seemingly on the verge of victory in numerous instances. If he wasn't facing a main character for the arc, that kind of effort from Rock Lee would have certainly knocked any opponent senseless. Seemingly having an answer for everything Gara threw at him, Lee looked at the top of his game before finally taking the obligatory loss. There was no way that Rock Lee was going to win this, but boy did he go out like a true champion. <laughs> Over the years, One Piece has given us a lot of cool and emotional fights. As one of the biggest shonen series out there, it's bound to have several fights that are contenders to make it on this list. Now, why did I choose Luffy's fight versus Luchi specifically? In addition to the emotional context and the weight of the fight, I'd say that the battle against Luchi is one of Luffy's fights that is all about his raw power. For a lot of fights, Luffy receives help in true shonen fashion, whether it be surviving Crocodile's initial assaults through luck or Law helping out against Doflamingo and others. 
this. However, this battle against Luchi is a good old physical brawl that, barring some motivations from Usopp, basically is a battle that Luffy won through effort. Not a lot of plot related devices going on around to help Luffy secure the win, and we're treated to a nice little slugfest that features the two combatants answering each other with blazingly hard punches and physical feats. I've talked about this fight from Sword of the Stranger before. In fact, it topped another list that you might want to check out too, but I guess that's just a testament as to how awesome this climactic battle is. Throughout the movie, we've been treated to scenes of Luo Lang's feats and the hype for the climactic battles over the roof. All this time, we were made to wonder what Nanashi could possibly do to defeat his opponent, who's been shown to have the strength of an entire army, and trust me, that's no exaggeration. The fight at the altar is probably one of the best pieces of anime cinematography, not just in the decade, but in anime history as a whole. Think about that. The intensity of the fight's been amped up and that's all thanks to the animation, the acting and the soundtrack backing up the classic bout. If you have to pick an anime fight to represent peak anime battles in the 2000s, this one has got to be one of the strongest candidates. As we conclude the list, I got sucked into a wave of nostalgia myself. I'm more of a 2010s guy if we're talking about anime decades, but the 2000s had a lot of great highlights, didn't they, if I do say so myself. From intense sword fights to blitzingly fast fist fights and emotional clashes, this decade did have it all. Perhaps you might have some other fights that you can recommend from this decade. I and the rest of the community would definitely love to hear from you. So what are you waiting for? Start a discussion on the comment section and we'll get to you in no time. So that's it for now. See you next time on Vinitube.